Sometimes your brush draws heavy lines, such as a dragon in flight. The next moment, it is as thin and delicate as a dragonfly's wings. Sometimes the line is calm. Then suddenly it makes the roar of a cataract. Whatever the person feels will be reflected in his writing. Calligraphy is the harmony of the hand and the spirit. My name is O Sokju. My father gave me this name, which means one who is very good at writing and will reach a high position in government. I never did reach any government position. I was born in Kyangsang, Bukdo, Korea. I came to America because my daughter and son-in-law immigrated to the U.S. My sons wanted to come to the U.S. too. They said, Father, let's go. So we did. I was seven years old when I first started writing calligraphy. I learned from my father. My father was a conservative scholar who was very strict. Every day I spent two hours writing calligraphy. I was frequently whipped because I played instead of worked. When I was over 20, I asked my father if he had been more severe with me than with my siblings. He admitted that he had because he wanted me to be a great man. In the beginning, you need only paper, brush, inkstone, and ink block. You must also have the manual from which you copy characters. And you must learn how to hold the brush and how to move it. Moving and holding the brush requires concentration with the muscles in the lower abdomen. The power from your belly goes up to the mind, then down your arm to the hand, then to the tips of the fingers. When I hold a brush, even a wrestler cannot seize it from me. When I was a student, my teacher would come from behind me and reaching suddenly over my shoulder would grab the brush from my hand. Whenever he could take it from my hand, I would get a whipping. After being whipped many times, I concentrated the power in my hand to such an extent that my whole arm shook. This is a downstroke. Downstrokes begin from here, with the bottom slanting sideways, the brush raised at 90 degrees from the paper. As the brush folds in, the tips will pass the middle rapidly. After a certain length, give pressure as if you were pushing down on it, then lift it up. Carry the brush here, then fold it like this, lift, then push down a little, then gently spread out. You are using your hand, so in the beginning, you are prone to think of worries and problems. But as you progress, all negativities disappear without your knowing it. Sometimes you think about a fight with your wife or your business going down, and still you can do excellent calligraphy. While writing, you gradually sink into an oblivion. The moment you hold the brush, whether as a beginner or as an accomplished calligrapher, the pleasure you get from it 
is the same. If you diligently practice for six months, you will learn the fundamentals. If you practice for one year, you will reach the stage where you can develop a style. Some call themselves calligraphers after three years. They are still amateurs. During the Second World War, it was not possible to study. I was about 21 then. I tried many things, but I was not successful at any of them. When I tried to fit into the real world, I had trouble. We were so poor, we had to move often. It was very cold at night, and I only had a small kerosene lamp to work by. In the early morning, my hands were stiff with the cold. But no matter what I was doing, I took every chance I could to read and write and read and write. In order to study calligraphy, you have to possess the right attitude. There must be tranquility in you. If somebody asks me to distinguish between Japanese, Korean, and Chinese calligraphy, I would have to say Korean does show more bone than Chinese. Chinese calligraphy is rounder, softer in touch than Korean, which is angular, harsher in form, though not as extreme as Japanese, because Korean is in the middle between Chinese and Japanese. It represents the most beautiful compromise in the art. The three fundamentals of calligraphy are line, dot, and stroke. All three must have the correct speed, force of pressure, and form. This is the trinity of calligraphy. Calligraphy is said to have begun about 4,500 years ago in China. Ideograms and characters originated from China. When they came to Korea, they became Korean, just as when they went to Japan, they became Japanese. Characters are symbolic pictures of the real thing. The origin of each is complicated, but all characters are made from simple dots and lines. When you combine dots and lines, you achieve a beautiful harmony. Korean calligraphy began about 1,500 years ago in the Shila dynasty. A Korean script called Hangul was invented in the 1443 by King Sejong in the Yi dynasty. These Korean characters consist of 24 phonemes. 
including consonants and vowels. Chinese characters each express certain meanings, but Korean characters do not. Hangul resembles the English alphabet because it requires a grouping of several letters to form a word. can mix Chinese characters along with Korean phonemes. Korean utilizes both. Because of these characters and phonemes, you can create an unlimited variety of styles. The older you get, the better your calligraphy becomes. After 10 or 20 years, one might say he is a master, but never. To have a serious degree of accomplishment, you need 20 years of practice. But this is not mastery. One has to be over 50 to really put out a genuine effort. Every time you put the brush on paper, all the years of practice show. Every time I write, I wish to create the perfect work. I have to feel good and have a clear space in my mind in order to create. It must be quiet. The density of the ink should be exactly right. If it is too thick or too thin, you cannot expect a good work. But even when all these things are fulfilled, the desire alone does not create a good work. When I have a strong desire to write but no inspiration, I take a shower, get a haircut, drink some wine, and still, when I sit down to do it, it does not work. Then I throw my mistake away, throw the next away, and keep throwing it away. In painting, if you make a mistake, you can alter it to improve the painting. In calligraphy, once you draw a line and feel it is a bit short, if you add to it, it will lose equilibrium and is ruined. It must be done in one movement. I keep throwing away the paper, and if it finally doesn't work, I just give up and go to the park. I have a favorite route I take in the park. It is always the same. I meditate while walking. I think of my friends and the country I left behind. I think of my discipline and writing. Calligraphy never leaves my mind. One state of mind, whether it be happiness, enjoyment, anger, affects calligraphy. It does not matter at all if the writing is pretty. Some instructors might urge you to write elegantly, but calligraphy does not have to be elegant or smooth. Rough, even unattractive writing is often of greater aesthetic power. The beauty lies in the sincerity. After a while, you have to develop your own style. I don't believe anyone can go beyond a certain limit in artistry if you are not born with talent, no matter how hard you try. Maybe I am not as smart as others. It has taken 30 years for me to create and perfect my style. 
if you are still copying someone, no matter how good your writings are, you cannot call yourself an artist. I failed seven or eight of the ten goals I planned for my life. Most of the time, I have only myself to blame. Often, I regret I chose calligraphy as a career. Whenever I fall short of my expectation of becoming a master, I criticize myself for being so stupid and not being capable. When I was leaving Korea, Mr. Go, a close friend of mine, said he would like to buy my hands and told me to name the price. I said, I could never sell them, even for 10 million won. Another time when I was sick and in the hospital, the persistent Mr. Ko said, please leave me your hands if you die. Since you can spend it in the next world, I will pay you any amount you ask. We both laughed. I've been devoting my whole life to the technique and art of calligraphy. How could I exchange it for anything else, no matter how good it is? There is nothing else that gives me more pleasure than practicing calligraphy. Even in the middle of a banquet, when in my mind I see certain characters looming in front of me, my friends would say, what are you daydreaming about? For me, the soundless rhythm of my characters sounds better than the loveliest song of a geisha. I will leave my friends and come home to write. While writing one character, I seem to hear within certain indescribable sounds, rhythms without sound. Calligraphy is soundless rhythm and spontaneous vitality, a, a soundless poem. And the writing brings me into the forgetfulness of a kind of nirvana.